we're um, recording this for the, uh, for the benefit of, of internal and external. So we're going to put the videos out. We're going to provide you with the slides and everything. So everything's going to be available afterwards. So we want you to take this information, go to your partners and or your, your companies, um, show them the stuff, teach them what you've learned. Um, so let's talk a little bit about architecture. So architecture is, um, so unlike traditional building architecture, which we just saw an example of, we don't deal that much with aesthetics. I mean, if it's design, sure. But it's, this, is about, um, this is about maintainability and flexibility. The architecture that you build is about making sure that you can change stuff afterwards. Because change is really important in our world. I mean, if you're building a, a, a satellite software, then maybe performance and, and stability is a little more important than flexibility. But we're building marketing software, and that's all about change. So, so, uh, so architecture for us is about defining those principles that makes it possible to change. So architecture has these, or there's, there's these four cornerstones that we're going to talk about is principles, the why of the architecture, why do we even bother with architecture? Why did we choose this architecture? There's the conventions. How do you then apply those principles to the code that you're writing and the, and the solution that you're building? And then we've got examples and tools to help us with those conventions. Because when you press one button and it just does what the convention does, it's a lot easier than when you have a tool that works against the conventions. And we, we're, we're facing both those things in our daily work. We'll talk a bit about that as well. So we've got the principles of package design, which we're going to talk about. We've got the Helix stuff, we've got the Habitat stuff, and then all the tools that you're working with daily. Uh, TDS, Unicorn, Experience Accelerator coming, build scripts, all those kind of things. As I mentioned, we're all in a scenario of change. The minute we launch something, customers want something else. That's just how it is. <laughs> that's, that's a given. The only thing certain in life is change, right? Um, so, so trial and error and new requirements, all those kind of things is very much um, the, the flavor of the day. Um, and uh, if you've seen the, the videos, the Habitat videos, this is also that kind of um, the, the same message here. Our, our biggest problem is that over time, uh, the cost of change becomes higher and higher. We, that's, that's also a given. Because the technology that we built on yesterday is outdated today. So just the fact that we have to update the technology will give, give you a, an added cost. The guy that built the software, he left the company two months ago, so you don't have the knowledge anymore. All those kind of factors play in. And then, of course, new principles, new tools, the fact that you want to be on the cutting edge, you don't want to be build, building on web forms anymore, you want to be building on MVC and all that stuff. So there's just up, all that stuff that's in there. So the point of the architecture is to try to keep that down as much as possible. To look ahead and think, oh, we need to upgrade. We can't be stuck on Sitecore 7.2, because I know there's quite a few customers that are still on 7.2. I think I might have been on, on some that are still on 6, actually. But, um, so, so it's about building in the right way so that we can constantly upgrade and, and keep on top of things. So one of the solutions or the, the architectural principles that I very much meet in the cycle world is that it's the monolithic architecture. It's the let's just throw all the code in there. Let's just get this solution out of the way. Let's just put everything together. And then it solves the requirements. Tick. The problem with that is it, I mean, you have to change the whole thing every time. There's no this and that. It's just everything at once, right? change this thing, you'll change this one, you have to test everything. That's the, that's the thing about monolithic architecture. So the first principle of architecture is always separating things out. We need different parts, because otherwise it's not architecture, it's just one big chunk. So, so we need to split and break down into different manageable parts. The second thing about architecture is dependencies. We need to be aware that there are dependencies between different parts. Because if there's no control of that, we just return to the monolithic architecture. And then it doesn't really matter. We might as well have done the first thing. So the, the key thing is cutting it down into 
pieces, dependency control. Otherwise, might as well go with the gung-ho style. So, and all facts talk toward this is a productivity thing. If you don't control your dependencies over time, the more features, the more stuff you put in, the harder it'll become to change your application. You will spend all your time on the, the actual, all your effort on just the dependencies. Every time you change something over here, three things break. So you have to test everything. So all the effort will be spent on testing and, and, and quality control and all that stuff and not actually uh, extending and, and changing the features. So it's, it's really the dependencies that makes architecture really hard. So we need some sort of, of control of how to couple things together. So if we don't, if we don't think about how the layers or the, the, the dependencies um, work, if we don't define the conventions, then we're going to end up in a mess. So controlling things like that not happening, because then you get these circular references, you get these problems of things depending on one thing that actually breaks something else and all that so and the, the benefits are huge I mean, we're, we're ending up in a situation where we can we can fix the problem the customer has we can add another feature without even touching the 95 percent that we know is not in there and it's, it's we just added test that one thing we go and and so all the effort that we spend on testing and quality assurance we can now spend on actually adding features, adding value, doing the fun stuff. Because that's, that's what I prefer to do, add new stuff, not maintain old stuff. The other, uh, other benefits of this is that we start looking into something like DevOps and, 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 uh, and um, the, in, the infrastructure of the solution. All those kind of things become a lot more manageable if you have a, a tangible sort of a, an easy to manage uh, and, and control the dependencies. It's a lot easier to work with configuration files and all those kind of things if you break them down into manageable parts. So the principles of package design tells us how to do this, how to break your application down. And this is, this is what the Helix principles are based on. And there's two parts to it, the granularity, which talks about what is a module, what defines an actual module, how do we make the modules manageable, and then the stability, how does modules in the application actually connect together? How do we make the implementation stable? So there's, there's six principles. The first three of them, it has to do with package cohesion. So, how, so the granularity of the, um, of the application, what is a, a module? What is the size of a module? Um, what, makes it, uh, what makes it a module? What, how, do you, how, do you, how do you make sure that you don't put stuff in modules that doesn't belong there? All those kind of things. So let's, uh, I'm going to walk through those. those. Um, the first principle is the principle of reuse release. And this talks about actually what a, a module is. This, this defines a module. A module is something that belongs together. If, if you ship one of the classes in a module, you ship them all. It's not, it's not like an, a, it, you just take half the module and then the rest is, is, is not really. If you change one thing in the module, it change, you change the whole thing. It's, this is about all the stuff that, that is in a module should belong together and, and re is released together. So that's, that's actually the definition of a module. So the, the second one is the common reuse principles, which is the, 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 um, the cohesion. So, um, if you've got two classes that are very tightly bound, so one class depends on another, an interface and a class, you probably want to put those in the same module. Because otherwise, you've got two modules that are so highly coupled, they're actually one. The third one is the common closure principle. So this is perhaps the most important and certainly one of the most overlooked principles. And that's the, um, so this is where we, lo we look at bloating. So this is where, um, uh, this is where the, the, um, the, the change, so the, this is the, the single responsibility principles that you talk about in class object-oriented design. So every class should have just one responsibility. 
Same goes for a module. So one module in your Helix implementation should have one responsibility towards the customer and towards the business. If it has multiple responsibilities, there's multiple reasons for change, and there's multiple reasons for testing, and you don't really know which of the responsibilities will make you have to test and, and, and change your, your code. So, um, and again, this is where bloating very often comes in. Um, there's certainly mistakes in, in, the, uh, in the Habitat implementation. If you look deep into the code, um, one, of the, one of the modules in there is called uh, Sidecore Extensions. Good generic name, right? Mm -hmm. You can just chuck everything in there because you know the feature the customer asked, that was an extension on Cycle, right? Just chuck it in there. So suddenly you end up with a, a module that's so sort of generic that actually has multiple, um, multiple responsibilities. And, and that is, that's, a, that's actually a big, big risk in this. Um, it's one of the, the, probably the biggest risk, and Anna's is gonna talk a lot more about that. Um, the, the rule of thumb, my rule of thumb is that a module cannot be too small. I have no problem with a module that has one view in it. It, it might give some overhead in the development. Sure, there's a project more, or like some folders or stuff like that. But it's, it's for, the maintain, for the maintainability, that scenario is a whole lot better than the, the opposite. So breaking down into smaller modules is often a lot better than having bigger modules. So the second part of this is the stability. So this talks about the, um, the, the actual layers and how the dependencies between the different modules. Um, just a terminology thing, which I just realized, of course, we're talking, this is talking about packages. We're talking about modules and Helix. That's just a definition, because in, in the cycle world, if you begin starting talking about packages, there's another terminology there. So we did have some discussions about those kind of things. So, um, so at, at, in Helix, it's all about modules. These are the package principle design. Package, module, same thing. Um, this should be an, an obvious sort of thing. If you start circularly depending on different modules, those will actually affect each other. So one change here affects this and so on. And then you start with these scenarios where it's untestable because everything just breaks each other, potentially. Second is the stable dependencies principle. This is, um, this is where the layers in, in the Habitat um, or Helix um, is, 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 um, is applied. This, is the, this, defend, this, this defines um, modules that are um, different. They have different volatility, different stability levels. So if you have an API that your, your customer features depend on, chances are that the API will change a lot less than the actual features. The customer will probably say, we want the button to change to the left side and the right side. They probably don't say, can we have the search index um, optimized from Lucene to Solar or something like that. Um, so so the, the, the change of the, the, the definition of different modules, um, you, you have an inherent uh, volatility to some modules and a, and a stability to some modules. And the importance is that the Volatile modules depend on the stable modules. And that's, that should be equally obvious when you think about it, because if you change things a lot of times, you don't want to test the stable things all the time. So it's the other way around. You only need to test the stuff that's in the, in the things you change. And this is, so this, is, this talks about that whole stability as well, in that if you have a very um, a very stable module, then that needs to be abstract because then that makes it stable. If you have a good definition, a good interface to a module, then the code down below can change as much as it wants because the modules on top will, will actually know what it's reflecting. Whereas if you have a volatile one, the, the, the abstraction becomes a little unnecessary and, and unmanageable often. It's, it's, that is, that's likely to change, so the interface changes all the time. So the, the, the st a stable module, um, a stable module, one of the, um, uh, as, as it said here, it says here, the, the extension of a stable module should be so easy because it's, the interface is clearly defined. Where in the, uh, in the other way, in the volatile modules, 
the, the, the extension of the module should be so easy that you don't have the abstraction layer on top. So it, it kind of hangs together like that. So those are the six principles of, of package design. Uh, hopefully you should see those very clearly in the Helix principles of modules and layers. Now, this is, um, so the, the, so Helix is the conventions that we put on top of these principles. So this is why we have Helix to define the conventions so that you can follow these principles. And, and I guess that the importance of knowing these things is if, if, um, if you don't know the principles behind an architecture, a lot of the conventions obviously uh, often seems like a nuisance to you. Like the, if, if, you're not, if, you're not, um, if you don't unit test your code, for example, then the MVC pattern might seem a little like, why, why do I have to make a controller um, and a model and a view? What's, what's, why, why do I need that kind of coupling? Well, it's to abstract the business or the, the view, view logic away from the presentation layer, it's the same kind of volatility stability thing, right? Um, but but it's, if you don't have the principles behind it, then why do I need it? Again, why don't I just go to the monolithic stuff? Why do I need architectural principles or conventions? <laughs> 